where we'll begin today by familiarizing ourselves with our pattern pieces. You can see here the front and the back bodice piece of your sulky tee. Now, the neckline options are visible on both pattern pieces. The scoop neck and the crew neck will be the two necklines that we will be focusing on throughout this tutorial and the class. The V-neck cut line you may choose to tackle at a later date, but we will not be covering it in this class. You can see here on the back bodice, there are separate cut lines for the scoop and V-neck, and then a higher one for the crew neck. So if you're cutting the crew neck T for this class, cut along the higher line on the back bodice neckline. If you're cutting the scoop neckline on the front, cut the lower line in the back. And the way that I like to do my patterns is that I like to cut along the lower neckline and the upper neckline and simply affix the pattern piece with a piece of tape to allow for me to keep it together with my other pattern pieces and to access both cut lines with one pattern piece. So I'm gonna do that now with the back. I simply line it up fix with tape, one single piece of tape. So if I'm doing the crew neckline, I would cut here and I would simply fold it back for the scoop neckline. Now both of these pattern pieces are cut on the fold and that simply means that the fold of your fabric will go along the long straight inner part of the pattern piece where the fold indicator mark is here on the front pattern piece. Other things that you will be able to see on your pattern piece our grain line, so that your grain line will be running up and down, and stretch. Now it's very important when you place your pattern pieces on your fabric that the greatest direction of stretch is running horizontally across the pattern piece so that the stretch will stretch around your body or around your arm and your sleeve. So I'm gonna go ahead and place one of these on the fold to give you a look at what that looks like. So when you receive your kit, the first thing that you will notice is that your Oakley fabric may very well be the softest fabric that you have ever felt. <laughs> it is a sweater knit, but it is a closely woven sweater knit so that you can't see through the knitting at all. It's almost more like a brushed jersey and a sweater knit mixed together. So it's one of my absolute most favorite fabrics due to its versatility. It works well for t-shirts, dresses, lounge pants, um, cardigans, all types of accessories, scarves. It is just an absolutely beautiful, versatile fabric that launders well. So this is a polyester spandex blend, so you do not need to worry about pilling or fading. Um, it's, it's, and it's so, so soft. So when you open your fabric, what you may notice is a white line running along the cross of one of two of the edges. Well, mine only has it on one side, but you can see here, this is called the selvage. On the opposite side, the selvage is not white, but you can see that it is bound and that it rolls. So the two selvages on my fabric run this way and perpendicular to those is the cut line. This is where the fabric was cut. And it is across the fabric, from selvage to selvage, that your greatest direction of stretch will run. Now you can stretch your fabric to determine that, and then turn it and stretch it the other way. And you can see that although it does stretch, that it's not quite as a high of a stretch percentage as it is in this direction. So when we lay our pattern piece down on our fabric, we will fold it like this, double check to make sure that the stretch is running this way, smooth everything out, and this is our fold line. And you will simply place your pattern piece right up against the fold line and pin 
or weight it down depending upon whether you are using scissors or a rotary cutter. I often fold mine back and weight down that pattern piece and I use a rotary cutter to go ahead and cut out around your pattern piece. We'll now take a look at some of our other pattern pieces. So here we're going to take a closer look at our sleeve pattern. Now the sleeve is not cut on the fold, it is cut mirror image. And you can either do that by placing your fabric on the fold, placing your pattern piece down and cutting two at once, or you can cut one with your pattern piece facing up, turn your pattern piece, and cut one with your pattern piece facing down. Cutting two mirror imaged pieces will allow you to cut a left and a right sleeve. Now the reason why the sleeves need to be left and right is because the sleeve cap is a little bit different in the front than it is in the back. You can see here there's a notch and this indicates the front of the sleeve. Wherever you see notches along your arm side, be sure to cut them out because they will help you during construction. You can see here the notch on the front of the bodice along the arm side that will match up with the notch on the front of your sleeve, um, helping you to avoid the error of sewing your sleeves on backwards. The notch you see here will correspond to the shoulder seam, where your back and front bodice line up at the shoulder, helping you keep everything straight during construction. Now you can see that I have my sleeve cut on the short sleeve line because I will be constructing the short sleeve. If you wish to sew the long sleeve or the three-quarter sleeve, you're welcome to. Simply cut along the line of the version that you would like to make. I often tape the two pieces together, just as you saw before, and simply fold up as needed to keep my pattern pieces together. Here you can see the two pockets that are available on this pattern. There is a rounded pocket and a square pocket. You can choose either one and simply cut the version that you prefer. Now the thing that makes this pocket a little different than others you may have constructed in the past is that along the top of the pocket, it is cut on the fold. So when you cut your pocket, and st direction of stretch is not quite as important on the pocket as it is on your other garments. You will simply fold your fabric and place the top of the pocket where it indicates fold along the fold and cut your pocket out just like that so that it will open up. The way the pocket is constructed is that it's sewn leaving a small one inch opening and then turned and pressed. It provides a nice clean pocket. And finally, we will look at the neck bands. Now we spoke earlier about how we will not be constructing the V neck band for this tutorial, but you may choose the scoop or the crew neck band according to your preference and cut out the neck band on the corresponding size of your upper bust measurement. Whatever size you cut along the neckline, that is the size neckband that you will cut. It is also cut on the fold, so be sure to place the fold indicator along the fold of your fabric and be sure that the stretch, this is very important, that the stretch is running along the length of your neckband. And this will allow the neckband to stretch around your neck. Now we are going to make one small alteration to the neckband pattern piece and I will show you that now. So I cut a small, I printed both sizes so you see small and medium but I grade between small and medium and I cut a small neckline so I'm going to cut the neckband now we're going to make one small alteration to your neckband pattern piece. We are going to add additional width to the pattern piece. It will still be cut along the length to the size that corresponds to your neckline, but the width 
will be a half an inch wider. And I'm simply going to do that by taking a scrap piece of paper, placing my neckband on the paper, taping it down, measuring up from one side a half an inch, connecting those two lines, and then keeping my same length, and I'm going to cut out my new altered neckband pattern piece. It is simply a half an inch wider than the original. And the reason for this is that I have a little tip that I use when sewing my neck bands on that makes construction a lot more easy. Um, that will give you more control when you're sewing your neck band on. So this is my new neck band pattern piece and you're welcome to label it as such. You can see it's simply a half an inch wider than my standard pattern piece. You would do this for either the scoop or the crew neck.